spoiler alert, um, I have got nothing but nice things to say about this guitar. It had six strings on it when it arrived. For you that are quite picky about where your wood comes from, this is proper North American alder, apparently. It's got a bevel, got a bevel there. Sometimes a guitar just feels just right, and this is one of them. If you're looking for a, a boutique Telecaster, this fits that bill. I think this is the white Telecaster I've been looking for. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us this morning, or whatever it is where you are now, uh, at this particular time. Um, you're very welcome, you're very welcome. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. Here's the story, if you've been following this channel at all, you might recall that a, a short while back, um, I was on the lookout for an affordable white Telecaster. I really fancied an affordable white Telecaster. Whiz forward to a few weeks ago, you, you, might, you might also have seen that I reviewed the new Sire um, L7, which is the Les Paul copy from the, the highly rated Sire range. The Andertons and, and Toman, I think, but Andertons are, are particularly big fans of, and they've done a whole series of, um, you know, glowing, some would say puff reviews on, on this, these Sire guitars. Um, I say that because a few weeks ago I got a Sire L7 from them and reviewed that, and uh, although I did, I did say a lot of really good, positive things about that guitar, I wasn't, I wasn't really negative about it. It's, um, you know, £499. If you're in the market for a, a, a Les Paul copy at that price range, this is one of them. I did say a lot of good things about it, didn't I? And it plays good and it sounds good. I mean, I did. I was, I was positive about it. Um, and it feels good. Anyway, the, the point is about this, um, about this L7 that I bought from Andertons a few weeks ago. When it arrived, there were a few things that weren't, you know, weren't, I thought, weren't, <laughs> weren't acceptable, really. Um, it did arrive with five rusty strings. Um, there's actually a split there. I wonder why that is. It's like someone's done that with a knife or, or what, I don't know. It's a bit weird. So I thought I'd, I'd mention them. And it, and it adds a little bit of balance, I hope, to you know, some of the puff reviews that we've seen. My job here is to be honest. And uh, I'm just like you guys at home. If, if you order a guitar online, which unfortunately, with the way things are, seems to be the new normal. We, we, we don't have s s such opportunities nowadays to to go shopping and try things out and, and you know make a decision on whether or not we're going to buy them. We have to take a chance based on these reviews. Um, I buy these guitars the same as you guys do, so I will just talk about them as I see them, really, and as I feel about them. Um, sometimes I get excited about things, sometimes I don't. There's obviously, you know, my views on a guitar will differ from yours considerably compared to, you know, based on what my preferences are. and But I'm sure you can see through that. Um, but I'm sure you can also understand that if I see a fault, I can point it out. You can see that that might be a fault. It might be something that would worry you. It might be, it might not be. Anyway, so as a, as a result of my um, research back into Anderton's review of the whole Sire range, I discovered to my delight that they have now introduced a a T-style guitar um, uh, in the classic style, and 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 this is it um, in resplendent in antique white with a, a tortoiseshell pick guard and and the classic um, you know three brass saddles. Uh, so I was delighted. 
And um, spoiler alert, um, I have got nothing but nice things to say about this guitar. Uh, it had six strings on it when it arrived, and they were fresh. And even there was an even a, an Ernie Ball tag um, hanging <laughs> hanging on one of the tuners, so I could see what sort of strings were on it. And I had a, an Anderton's checklist, QC checklist, which actually I've left in the box downstairs, but um, I can't show you that. But there was an Anderton's checklist, um, which proves that this particular guitar has been checked. Um, and, and it's arrived absolutely fit for purpose. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll carry on in a minute and I'll tell you why it's absolutely brilliant. But it is. And... Um, it was four hundred and sixty nine pounds, and um, I think this is the white Telecaster I've been looking for. What we'll do now is we'll go through the specs and we'll have a real close up look at this this thing, and uh, we'll do what we do. We'll 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 weigh it. We'll we'll measure the pickup outputs. We'll have a look at the pickups underneath. We'll measure the old neck. We'll have a close up look at at this beautiful neck. I must must tell you. Um, and uh, we'll find out what it's all about. We'll start with the body. Uh, they specify this as North American alder. So it, it's not any old alder. Um, for, you, for you that are quite picky about where your wood comes from, this is proper North American alder, apparently, and none of that Asian rubbish that you don't like. So tick there, eh? Good start. Um, and the neck, I mean... You know, you, you probably noticed already, but this has got um, a roasted hard maple neck. They call it roasted hard maple. Um, and it's got a really nice, um, smooth finish. Really, really slick finish. It feels great. Uh, and, it's, um, and it's lacquered. It's got this solid, you know, gloss fingerboard that some will love, some will hate. I think Danish Pete was talking about this. I personally found this really nice, really slick. The headstock, it, it, you know, it's going to divide opinion, but um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm in the I like it camp, definitely. I think it's, it's nice. It's, it, it looks expensive, and I think it's, you know, I think it's nicely understated. I like it with the way they've done the logo and, and stuff. And this has got the premium Sire premium locking tuners which is a nice high-end appointment really, isn't it? And also what I noticed is they've got um, the low, the, the, the E and the A string, the, the posts are a little bit taller than the others, which, um, which basically means that the break angle um, down from the, the bone nut, shall we, shall we add at this point, the break angle from the bone nut is not too extreme down to, down to those posts. So it, it, it's, a, it's a good little detail that they've thought about. Um, yeah, nice detail, that. So bone nut, medium jumbo frets. We'll have a close-up look at those in a minute, but I can tell you they, they feel great. And the body, obviously, you know, traditional Telecaster-style design, but you've got this... Um, You've got a bit of a contour here. It's quite subtle. Um, might do some B-roll to pick that up, but it's got a little bit of a, it's got a bevel, it's got a bevel there, and just a slope there. So, yeah, it's quite subtle, but a nice little touch. I like that a lot. The pickups here, they, um, these are called the Sire uh, Larry Carton Super T pickups. Um, we'll measure these in a bit, okay? Sire Larry Carton Super T, and obviously, as you can see, they're you know they're the standard you know Telecaster style, um, and it's got the, uh, the 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 three brass saddle bridge. Um, and what I've noticed about this as well is is, is as well as it's a, you know a string through body design with the standard design with the sunk bushings I suppose you call them so they're they're nice and flush you've also got as this bridge is can also be used as a top loader so you've got the the option there you can you know you can try both and 
and, and see which you prefer. I don't know if there's any difference. We haven't done that experiment, but, you know, maybe one day. But um, And this has got the three brass saddles, but they're intonated. So it's a... Uh, it's an improvement on the original design in, in, in that it would be easier to get more accurate intonation. That's a cool thing. It's a nine and a half inch radius fingerboard and you can see from that that the saddles have been set uh, presumably to match that radius. Set up out of the box on this one, I've got three sixty fourths on the base side. And a little over one thirty twos twos on thirty seconds on on the treble side, which is how I would have set it. Lovely tortoise shell pick guard, three ply. Solid feeling domed, knurled knobs. Three way switch. Feels pretty good. So we'll take the uh, the scratch plate off and the strings off and we'll look under the pickups to see what's going on. And we'll look at the pots. We'll measure the neck. Um, we'll have a close-up look at the fretwork and we'll do anything else that I've forgotten to mention. Now, we've, uh, we've had a play on this. I'm not going to say proper play ever again. We've had a play on this. And um, we've had fun. So what we'll do is we'll we'll roll in some of the. We'll go through the switching now, and we'll show you what show you what's happening, and we'll 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 roll in some playing and some nerdy stuff at the same time to to try and keep the thing moving forward, and hopefully keep you watching until the end. So let's get into that. See you in a minute. chunky so so let's weigh it okay let's see what it weighs nice seven pound 15 ounces or 3.6 kilograms great okay so here we are unplugged can you hear that it's got a fabulous ring to it Just an E chord, ringing out, and an A chord, and an E chord. <laughs> um, this arrived yesterday afternoon. Uh, I had it delivered to my home because uh, I was there yesterday, and uh, I picked it up and I played it and I played it most of the afternoon. To be honest with you, um, just unplugged. Uh, and I just found it really nice. The neck feels so nice on this. It really invites you to, to play it. Really nice feel on the back. You know, it's, it's totally smooth, silky smooth on the back. And, um, yeah, and we've probably covered that elsewhere, but you know, has to be said. And the tuning stability was, was, I don't think it went out of tune, to be honest with you. I mean, Telecasters are known for that, aren't they? For being, you know, pretty robust on the, on the tuning front. Um, and this certainly lives up to that reputation. Okay, so that's it unplugged. And this is it plugged. Um, bridge pickup, fully dimed. Fender, 
Deluxe Reverb 2. Again, I still had it plugged in from last week, so I thought I'd give it a go first. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Let's have a volume. You can see what I'm doing here. It's not a bad taper. I've had a lot, lot worse than that. Let's turn the volume again. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good in the scheme of things, isn't it? A little bit of drive. That turns into this. shall we and muck around with the tone control as well see if we can get some different sounds out of it <laughs> OK, 
Okay, so let's measure the pickups. Uh, the bridge pickup is reading 6.02 kilo ohms. And the neck pickup is reading 7.25 kilo ohms. And the middle, as you'd expect, 3.33. Another nice little touch that I've noticed here is the um, it's a jack um, the jack socket here is um, it's one of them kind of screw in type um, which is, is is a nice little it's a nice improvement on the, the fender ones which are not as good <laughs> I don't know it's better you know don't know why but it's better. Okay. enough of that I think. It's got a really nice bluesy voice. That's obviously with the tube screamer on on that neck pickup's great. bright but you can just take the edge off just by using the tone control The fretwork looks really good, and, and and obviously this is, you know, it's got rolled fingerboard edges, which which they shout about, and, and quite rightly because it's it, it makes for a a really nice, comfortable playing experience. Now, there's something about this neck as well that is really feels good. I I, I played it. I got it on Friday afternoon early Friday afternoon and I spent all afternoon playing it. It just felt great, it just felt right. Sometimes that happens with guitars. I mean, sometimes I don't think you, you realize it when it doesn't. I think you just play a guitar, you know, and it's, it's fine. But sometimes a guitar just feels just right. And this is one of them, for me at least. Um, so, uh, See what these neck measurements and profile are. Okay, here's the neck profile and measurements at the first fret. And here's the neck profile and measurements at the 12th fret. I'm just looking at the fit of the neck into the neck pocket. It looks nice, looks fine. Certainly tidier than my 70s Telecasters. Okay, so let's have a look under the hood and see if we can see if we can find anything to criticise under here, shall we? Yes. 
I'm only joking, of course. I'm not. I'm not actually looking for anything to criticise. Oh, if I if I find something to criticise, I will. Don't worry. Oops. Get a screwdriver that fits. Right. So, what should we pull first? Let's pull the um, pull the control plate out first. Flip it over that way. Pop it upside down there. There you go. Okay, so we've got a uh, ginseng pots made in Korea. And um, just see if I can see what that cap is. There's no markings on the cap, so I can't actually see what that reads, measures whatever the term is, three blade switch, it feels substantial, feels, feel, it all looks and feels really nice, good, good quality stuff there. Now, under the, there you go, you can just see that, the sticker on the back of that that says, T7 neck, Sire T7 neck. And there's the cavity. Nice bit of shielding in there. Nicely finished. Not rough around the edges at all. So there you go. Let's pull that back a little bit. Ease that back into position. Ease that all back into position without any catching. So far, so good. It all looks really nice, doesn't it? Okay, so I will just, um, I will just pop the uh, the bridge off. There you go. What's oh, again, I can uh, just give it a free up a little bit of cable. That. Wow. That looks nice. Really tidy. Again, it's got a, you know, just a channel down there. Real nice shielding. Really nice, tidy work. And look at that brass plate. I'm assuming that's brass. It looks like brass on the bottom of the pickup there. Looks nice, doesn't it? It looks really, really solid piece of... Let's get out of the light. Very nice indeed. Okay, well, that's that. Um, that looks really tidy under there, doesn't it? Really, really well made and well thought out. So we're going to... Um, what we'll do now is we'll, we'll screw it all back together and put a new set of strings on. Um, Shoot some, shoot some close-ups, and um, we'll we'll get we'll have a chat about it. Yeah. Okay. See you in a minute. So I just dropped a screwdriver and fortunately, because it's got a nice tough, I don't know what they call it, polyurethane or whatever finish, but whatever it is, it hasn't marked it. So. <laughs> what I'm also noticing on here is, is how well all these parts are fitting together. Normally when you, you know, you you try and marry up the scratch plate and the control plate on a Telecaster, you have to do a little bit of jiggery-pokery around to, you know, to make them fit. But that's just gone straight in, no, no drama at all. Mm -hmm. 
It's also worth mentioning, I think, that all the screws seem to be straight. They're going straight down, you know. No jaunty angles here like you often get. Here you go, the, um, the plastic's coming off the scratch plate of this one. Uh, which as you know means I'm keeping it. Okay, there you go. New strings, all tuned up, ready for action again. Uh, and the, yeah, the locking tuners there, they, they really do make it easy, easier, should we say, to, um, you know, to restring. Um, I'm not that used to them, but I think if I got used to them, I, you'd probably think, oh, well, you'd probably want them uh, all the time, actually, I think, if you got used to them. Perhaps. I don't see any downside yet. I know I did mention that I was a bit uncomfortable with, you know, over tightening them, that they might cause breakages. Um, I've yet to see if that is a it is a problem or not, but um, yeah. Okay, so what do we think? I, I mean, like right at the beginning, I said I, I really like this guitar. I, I can't find fault with it at all. The, the whole way that it's been made, you saw, Andre. You, you know, it's really tidy. It's been really well made. It's been really well thought about. So, you know, if this is um, if this is truly representative of, of, of the other models in the range, um, you know, the H7, the Hollow Body 335, I haven't seen yet. I will. The S7, the Strata, like, I will get one of those and review that as well. Maybe the L7 that I got, you know, maybe I just got a bad one. Maybe it had been sitting in a shipping container for, for, for too long. Maybe it had been a return and that shouldn't have found its way into my hands. We don't know. <laughs> We never will. If I get the chance, I'll look at another another L7 in, in, in the future. They do some nice new colours. They do a, a nice a white one and a, a black one like a... So maybe maybe I'll find an... Maybe I've just found an excuse to buy another one and um, and give that a try and, and see if I can um, be a little bit more complimentary about it. As I said at the start, I said some nice things about it. I didn't say it was a bad guitar. I was just a bit unconvinced. This one has convinced me that they knock out some really, really nice guitars. And 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 I would absolutely recommend that you try the T7, certainly this model, the classic one, if you're looking for a um if you're looking for a, a boutique telecaster, this fits that bill. Um yeah. Playability wise, there's nothing there's nothing more you'd want. I like it. Yeah, great. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's what I think of this one. Um, and I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making this film because I've liked the guitar and I don't want to criticise guitars. Trust me. Uh, I want to. I, I love guitars, as, as you probably can tell. <laughs> and when I get something like this that I go, oh, wow, you know, I want to keep it. it it's, um, it'd be nice to have more guitars that I don't like because um, the trouble I'm having at the moment is actually selling things, you know. I haven't really sold very much at all so far. So in the new year, we're, we're going to have to get rid of some of these guitars so that we can buy some more. <laughs> this one I don't think I'll get rid of, though. I'm going to keep this one. As you know, I've been after a nice white classic Telecaster and I've found it. Here it is. Yeah, I'm keeping this. It's great. Love it. Okay, so on that note, I think we'll 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 call it a day and we'll leave it there. Um, so next week is New Year's Eve, actually. Uh, so what I'm planning to do, if it, if it if it happens, of course, might do something different. Might get another guitar in and review that instead. But what I'm planning to do is a, a, a call wall roundup of 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 all the guitars that are reviewed since june when we did the first one in june i think it was so um yeah a roundup of uh, the guitars that we've reviewed this year and we'll 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 try and find out if they're cool or not and where they where they go in the the cool wall rating so 
hopefully um, I'll see you then. Join us for that. Could be fun. Might not be. Might be rubbish. Might be something completely different. Who knows? You never know. I like to keep myself guessing, really, to be honest with you. I have a plan, but then I go, oh, there's a shiny guitar. I must buy that instead. We'll see what happens. Um, whatever it is, um, try and join us. Appreciate it. All right. See you again. Ta-da.